Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we'll start out tonight with the long-term monthly chart of silver, and I've got the MACD drawn in below. So I've drawn in a trend channel here. The trend channel pretty much contains the bulk of the bull move from roughly 1998. This high here that was actually the Warren Buffett purchase of silver and we know or we've heard rumors that he was forced out of that position uh, due to the silver suppression uh, then we've got the first spike above the trend channel with the rally in 2006 uh, that was the first time we got up to that $15 price and then of course we have the Bear Stearns top uh, we have the bottom at the uh, very bottom of the financial crisis, the breakout with QE2, the $50 attempt to break into new all-time highs, which was ultimately smacked down. And uh, then we have the breakdown all the way down back into the trend channel. And now you can see we're backing and filling. Uh, the other thing is is the MACD. We can see that the red line is trying to get above the zero point. Uh, the red line is still rising, although it looks like it's rolling over. Um, it, it's got a long way to go. The blue line is going to rise for quite some time. So it's going to take a significant correction, uh, I would say, below the trend channel, which really has never been violated. Uh, it's going to take a correction below that trend channel lower uh, lower line of the trend channel to actually turn this in a downward direction and keep it from crossing the zero line I don't think that's going to happen so the election is tomorrow what is this predicting for the election it doesn't really appear to be predicting anything I've looked through various markets today we had a rally in the stock market uh, with the dropping of the Comey investigation, but so much of this stuff is all politically motivated, it's hard to tell how important it is. I am going to predict that there will be a Trump landslide. I can't say exactly why. I just have that feeling. I could be wrong. Uh, I think that the shocking allegations that have come out now, obviously that... Uh, things coming out about Satanism uh, that takes some serious leaking going on uh, from inside of these uh, organizations now I have studied investigated the Satanism that goes on at the top levels of various governments for many decades and I am totally convinced the stories are real I believe the testimonies of various people, including Kathy O'Brien and many, many others who come out, uh, especially the people that were sex slaves and mind control slaves under these people. And if you believe Kathy O'Brien, it goes all the way back to uh, even before Reagan and uh, Ford and people like that it goes way back. Do I believe those stories are real? I don't believe 100%. I, I can't uh, verify the stories, no one really can, but I think most of the testimonies are fairly consistent uh, that the vast majority of these people at the top of these things are monsters. But that this is coming out now, and this is Jeff Berwick's article on Silver Doctors, Hillary Clinton is spirit cooking the entire U.S., I heard the term spirit cooking for the first time a few days ago. At first, I assumed it was some form of culinary style that was done in a spiritual way. Boy, was I wrong. And here's the cartoon. Hillary's staff emails can't be that bad. And they're Satanists. I heard the term spirit cooking for the first time a few days ago. Reports on the internet actually referring to a meal involving blood, sperm, and breast milk. The term was mentioned in an invitation to John Podesta, chairman of the Clinton campaign. Podesta didn't go to the dinner involved, apparently, but the term and its ingredients made considerable news on the Internet. As I thought about the term more and more, it seemed to be an appropriate fit for the Clinton campaign. 
This became especially clear in the news earlier today when FBI managed to review 650,000 emails in nine days after taking a year to review 33,000 previous ones, and they also determined that none of them would have an impact on their July decision to clear Hillary Clinton of leaking classified documents. I couldn't help thinking that the term spirit cookery seemed increasingly appropriate for what was going on. It feels like this entire presidential election has been subject to spirit cookery, mostly on the Democratic side. Uh, and and he goes on here uh, with Giuliani coming out. Now, I have covered uh, conspiracies and various things on different blogs that I've had in the past. And actually, one of the things that spurred me to cover the corruption in our uh, government and the corruption of our politicians um, was began with, under the Clinton administration, the Waco event. And the Waco event was a very, very disturbing event because that was an event where it was the first time where we saw, quote-unquote, white Christians being targeted by the government. And although it was a uh, Seventh-day Adventist cultist, David Koresh, who was uh, apparently uh, possibly a child molester, although we don't know for sure, uh, but was like many of those cultists where he married the children of, of the different people. And he was definitely a nutcase. But the fact that the government went in there and everything that I could determine was that they actually burned those people alive. And that was such a disturbing event for me. And of course, the next event that was very disturbing was the Oklahoma City bombing, which happened on the same date. I believe they both happened on April 19th. But that also appeared to be some type of satanic message. It was clear to me with the general part in, information that that was a false flag attack as the many that followed and uh, that was sort of my time of awakening and that was when I began to investigate the Clintons and their trail of corruption that led out of Chicago and Arkansas and ultimately into the White House and, and now possibly into the White House again. So how evil is this? Well, I'm afraid that it's pretty much, I'm going to use the term, pure evil. Now, we know from the Bible that when you have a female ruler, that is going to be the symbol of pure evil. Uh, most people are familiar with Ahab and Jezebel, and Jezebel is a term synonymous with a corrupt evil woman, but many people aren't familiar with Athalia, who is actually the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, who had a six-year reign of terror in the kingdom of Judah, and I, I'm going to read about that. But uh, the symbolism is clear in the Bible. It also is the case with the seven-year period of the tribulation where there is this woman, Babylon, that is reigning over the kings of the earth. Uh, there's no question that a woman in power is a symbol of pure evil. But let's review this and look at Athalia's reign of terror. So Athalia is usually considered the daughter of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel of Israel. Athaliah was married to Jehoram of Judah to seal a treaty between the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And to secure his position, Jehoram killed his six brothers. Jehoram became king of Judah in the fifth year of Jehoram of Israel's reign. Jehoram of Israel was Athaliah's brother or possibly nephew. Jehoram of Judah reigned for eight years. His father Jehoshaphat and grandfather Asa were devout kings who worshipped the Lord and walked in his ways. However, Jehoram chose not to follow their example, but rejected God and married Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab of the line of Omri. Jehoram's rule of Judah was shaky. Edom revolted and he was forced to acknowledge their independence. A raid by the Philistines, Arabs, and Ethiopians looted the king's house and carried off all of his family except for their youngest son, Ahaziah. 
After Jehoram's death, Ahaziah became king of Judah, and Athaliah was the queen mother. Ahaziah reigned for one year from the age of 22 and was killed during a state visit to Israel along with Jehoram of Israel. Jehu assassinated them both in Yahweh's name and became king of Israel. He had Athaliah's entire extended family in Israel put to death, ending the Omri dynasty in Israel. For her part, Athaliah seized the throne of Judah and ordered the execution of all possible claimants to the throne, including the remnant of her Omri dynasty. However, Jehosheba, Ahaziah's sister, managed to rescue from the purge one of Athaliah's grandsons with Jehoram of Judah named Jehoash, who was only one year old. Jehoash was raised in secret by Jehoshaphat's husband, a priest named Jehoiada. As queen, Athaliah used her power to establish the worship of Baal in Judah. Now, Baal was this god of uh, the Sidonians, which is an area that was conquered uh, in, by the northern kingdom, but ultimately they succumbed to this pagan worship of this god that was connected with human sacrifice, uh, including the sacrifice of children, bloodletting, homosexuality, all, all sorts of perversion. So Athalia actually established that religion in the southern kingdom of Judah, which up until that point in time had been pretty much uh, aligned with the Lord, although there had been some good kings and some bad kings. Generally, it's recognized that the northern kingdom of Israel was corrupt and had no good kings, whereas the southern kingdom had some righteous kings, which, in the words of the Bible, did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. So Athaliah had a six-year reign of terror in the southern kingdom of Judah, uh, basically by usurping authority and murdering all her rivals. Six years later, Athaliah was surprised when Jehoiada revealed that Jehoash lived and proclaimed him king of Judah. She rushed to stop the rebellion, but was captured and executed. And if you remember that story, she screamed, treason, treason, and he had her seized. So, that's the story of Athalia, a very, very wicked woman, a wicked, evil reign. And that is the sort of thing that we're looking at if Hillary Clinton wins. So I'm not saying that I'm a big Donald Trump supporter because I'm not. But I definitely see this being an election where we're talking about a lesser of two evils. Uh, I think we're talking about, with the election of Hillary Clinton, we're talking about pure evil. So the, the last thing I want to show you, which is probably the best predictor maybe of the election that I could find here, is uh, the coin that I'm looking at on Gainesville coins. And that's going to be the 2017 half ounce silver rooster lunar coin. And 2017 is the year of the rooster. So you can see here the symbolism of that coin. You can see the rooster here and then the female down there tending to the chicks. Kind of interesting. Does this rooster look a little bit familiar? Kind of remind you of anybody? Kind of looks maybe a little bit like Donald Trump, doesn't it? So that's my best prediction. The year of the rooster coin is predicting that Trump is going to win. It's going to save us from a reign of pure evil with uh, Hillary Clinton uh, not winning the White House. And we'll talk to you next time.